box to the under 22s in Rosetto in Italy in June got through to the quarterfinals Ganodan Gankuyag of Mongolia quarterfinalist in the Aiba World Championships in 2017 and 2015 a Rio Olympian in 2000 and 16 and a silver medalist at the Asian Championships in 2017 so that was a good year for him 2017 box to the worlds in 2013 as well in Almaty in Kazakhstan so plenty of experience and that's Gankiag just stepping through the ropes into the blue corner. 48 kilos. The limit for minimum weight. 46 to 48 kilos. Sporting that mohawk. Ganky Yag. Stephen Masiabumbi of... Zimbabwe our referee so here we go opening fight in the afternoon session in ring B minimum weight round of 16 in the red there boxing for Germany Christopher Goman in the blue representing Mongolia Ganoden Gankuyag Goman just looking to try and get on the jab early on Good lead left hook there from Gankiag. Just coming off the ropes. Clip Goman with that left and then just moved off to his left. Tucking up behind that pretty tight guard there, Gankiag. Looking for a big right hand over the top and lands it. And back into the ropes there goes Goman. Didn't quite go down because he clutched onto the ropes, but that was a, a legitimate knockdown. The referee giving the count. If he hadn't held onto the ropes there, Goman, he was going down. That was a big shot from the Mongolian. Knocked out the gum shield. And he exploded out of that guard and just arced that one nicely over the top. Almost at the midway point of round one, Ganky Yag will look to see if he could try and build on that. Goman looking to try and get back on the jab. Looking for the big right hand again there, Gankiag coming off the ropes and just chasing Goman across the ring. He's turned southpaw, he's picking his moments here. The Mongolian is when he wants to attack. And having knocked Goman down once, I think he feels that he's got the power to do some damage here. He's voluntarily going to the corner there, Gankiag. He's trying to tempt Goman in, and then let's go with that big overhand right again. Over the top of the jab. Goman does lean into his jab a bit. The weight quite heavily on that front foot. Gankiag is, is trying to sucker him in here, looking for that right hand again there. He was throwing the one-two there, Goman, and Gankiag is trying to line him up for that every time. He doesn't want to go too right hand happy here. Yes, it's worked really well once. The fighters can get slightly obsessed with, with an individual punch if they have big success with it early in a fight, which he has here. Mm. 
Gutman trying to finish with the one two and that was around for the blue corner. It won't necessarily be a 10 8 just because he, he got the knockdown. The judges looking to interpret dominance. So 10 9s across the board there. That's a good example of of Aiba scoring actually because in professional boxing that would be a 10 8 because Gankiag got the knockdown and he won the rest of the round as well. That would automatically be a 10-8. And when there is a knockdown in pro boxing, 99% of the time, it will be 10-8 to the fighter who scored it. Sometimes, almost regardless of what happens in the rest of the round, so long as the other fighter doesn't equalize with a knockdown. But in Aiba boxing, and there is that right hand, and you can see the shudder on the head there as it landed. In Aiba boxing, the five scoring judges ringside just use their judgment to interpret how dominant a fighter has been over the course of the entire round. Knockdowns are not treated as special cases in isolation. So there, they felt that it was a, a round win for Gankiag, but not a completely dominant one. So it's 10-9s, not 10-8s. You can score 10-7 as well. It's very unusual to see a 10-7. I've had one this week, I think. The reason for that is that if you're on the end of a 10-7, if it's that level of dominance from the other fighter, then the fight usually ends in that round. Gankiang just working to the body with the right hand there. The referee telling Goman to, to keep his head up. This is a difficult job for Goman because he's got to go out and try and win this fight, of course, but I think he knows that Gankiag has got the, the power to cause him problems. Southpaw here, Gankiag. What he can't do, though, the fighter in blue, is just go looking for big single shots. You do see boxers do that every now and again after they've had that early success, as I mentioned. But whilst they're looking for that big single shot, if it doesn't come and their opponent's just working away, landing, maybe not heavy, but landing, they can end up losing. Single left hand there from Gankiag, looking to try and stick that down the middle. Go, man. Stepping in with a one two. Right hand was cocked and ready to go there for Gankiag. Didn't throw it. Come on, working well actually in this round. Past the midway point. Left hand on the inside. He's not really a puncher, but he's not been deterred by what happened in the first. He's happy to step into range. Left to the body. Nice left up top. Half got through. And Gankiag hasn't thrown for a while, and this is exactly what Goman needs to do. He needs to occupy him, keep him busy. He's put it back into his shell a bit here. Right hand there from Gankiag. But Goman's having a good round here, particularly the second half of it. Left to the body there from Gankiag. One two from Goman. Not sure if that landed clean, but nevertheless, it just stops your opponent in his tracks. He's tucked up on the ropes there. Gankiag backpedaling. In that first round, he was looking to sucker Goman in and then throw that massive overhand right, but. He doesn't quite look the same in the second. I wonder if he's just been a little bit hurt by something that Goman's thrown. If he has, then I didn't pick out the individual punch. Could be some body work, but that's a really interesting round. Really interesting, because after that first, you thought really that, that it was there for the taking for Gankiag, but the second half of that round, something changed. He had a decent start to it, Gankiag, but the second half of the round, he barely threw a thing. Barely threw a thing. Oh, Goman's unlucky there, I think. Ten nines across the board, all in favour of Gankiag, and he's now got a two-point lead with, with all five judges. I think he's unfortunate there, Goman, not to get something. Split scores maybe keep this alive into the final round because he was doing all the punching in the second half of the round. As I said, not all of it got through clean, but... Some of it did. Repeat, 
Third and final round, Gankyag of Mongolia in the blue, Goman of Germany in the red. Gankyag, two rounds to nil up, Pete. Won the first one, absolutely no question. Scored a, a good knockdown with a big overhand right. The second round, personally, I'd have gone for the red corner, but it, it went to the blue, so he's two nil up. Goman has just got to stick to his task here. Gankyag with the jab off the back foot, looking for the right to the body. Turns southpaw. Creeping in there, Goman. I like the way he's responded, Goman, after that knockdown. Right hand from Goman. Right to the body there from Ganky. Goman just looking to try and pin Ganky back in the corner there. He looks to try and stick with the left hand. He's not really thrown that overhand right in the second or third round, Ganky. It's interesting. Something has happened to him, I think, in that second round. I don't know what. Whether he just got a little bit hurt or maybe there's some kind of injury, I'm not sure, but he's not the same as he was in the first round. He's beckoning Goman in there. Turn south for Gankyag. Leads off with the uppercut. A decent shot. Looks for it again. kind of signalling to the referee there that he felt that Goman had hit him with the inside of the glove. The referee seemed to agree and, and then stepped in and, and had a word. Gankiak just kind of backed off, dropped his gloves and, and again just looks at the referee and the referee has a word with, with Goman about, about holding. This is a strange fight to watch. Give the overhand right there, Gankiag. As I say, he won that first round, he got the knockdown, and, and things looked a little bit ominous for Goman, but since then, Gankiag has landed, he's has had some success, but it's been Goman on the front foot. You'd have thought, if anything, if I told you that one of these two had knocked the other one down in the first round and just made you watch the second and third, and you had to guess you had to guess who it was, you may well have guessed that it was Goman. To the final few seconds, Gankyo just looking to try and throw that uppercut off the ropes. He's going through here because he's two rounds to nil in front through those first two. Personally, I think Goman was unlucky not to get anything in that second round. Touch of gloves between the two. Well, that's an interesting start. That's an interesting start. He's going through the Mongolian. corner gets it split scoring in the final round there three cards going for Goman two going for Gankyahag so three scores of three rounds to nil and two scores two scores of three rounds to nil and three scores of 29 28 I didn't see any real difference between that third round and the second round to be honest with you Goman should have got something in that second round and that would have given him a chance of winning that fight I think he's been a bit unlucky there. I'm not saying he definitely deserved to win, but I think he deserved to have it in the balance going into the final round. As I was saying, that was an odd one. Ganky had with a knockdown in the first round, won that round, but then in the second round, I thought Goman won the second and third rounds myself. Anyway, we move on. Good start, interesting start. 